I want to say to, to you, if you have been in a position where you're trying to make a decision for your life and you're a Christian and you go to your pastor or your leadership at church and you say to them, I have a passion for this thing. And they say to you, no, don't backslide. Don't give up. Don't turn away from following God, right? There are a number of ways that you can exploit, follow your passion, go after your dream without giving up God, all right? I want to say to you, be encouraged. You're not alone. There are other persons who have gone through the same situation. Yes, some have given up the Lord and, and followed the passion and gone after it in sin. But I want to say to you, don't do that. Now, my reason for saying this to you is... The number of occasions and even my own personal experience that I have come across individuals who say, I am no longer participating in my church. I am going to go do what I want to do um, regardless of what them say. Make them go to hell. No, that's not the approach. I want to say to you that even though it's a challenge it might be a bruise to your ego. It might turn you off. I am still saying to you, you're not alone. Others have done it. Others have been told they can't, they shouldn't, they, and the list go on, but they are still following God and are enjoying their Christian life. They are enjoying their passion. They are enjoying their dream, and they are still um, focused on the Lord and they're making money. All right. Now, let me use this example. And I'm going to use three examples. First and foremost, my own self, right? It's not that I, I, I want to have sex. It's not that I want to, to have a relationship or it's not just because I want to feel the warmth of another person's body next to mine. It's just that I genuinely have a desire to, to be married, right? Now, the person who I had married before suggested and decided that I was a mistake, I was the wrong person for them, they don't love me, and they walk out. Now, what was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to stay um, single for the rest of my life, even though... Um, the, it, uh, it comes across, and even though the interpretation of the scripture is that once married, always married, never to be married again until that person dies. Now, I have gone to my leaders and I have said to them that this is the position that I am in. It's not that I am lusting. It's not that I, I am trying to be X or Y. It's not that I am disobedient and stuff, but this is how I am, this is how I feel, this is where my spirit is at, what's your recommendation? Now, their recommendation was one where I looked at it, and I'm being totally honest with you, because I want you to know that it's not a decision that you have to make to go into sin. It's a decision that you have to make that says to you and yourself, how do I follow God? How do I be obedient to his word? Even though some is telling me that I am not following his word and still remain true to your passion. There are some individual might say you are sinning, you are whatever, whatever. But I'm saying to you, don't backslide. Don't give up God because you feel as though you have been wronged, rejected, and put in a bad position by the church. Stay in God. Stay in your position. Like me, you might end up getting remarried or you might follow your passion and be put on the back bench. But even though you are put on the back bench, even though you are told that you can no longer participate 
in the things that you want to participate in in church. Still don't give up God. Find your secret place. Find your devotion in your, in your corner. Read your Bible. Pray. Witness to who you can witness to and encourage them to serve God as you decide to, to serve God. That is all I am saying to you because that is what I have done. The second example that I'm going to use to you is I went to a church the other day to minister. And where I was sitting, there was a young lady close by me. And when I listened to the young lady's voice, I thought it was an angel singing. I went to her after the service, after finished ministering, and it was a blessing. And I said to her, what do you do in your church? Why aren't you on your praise team? And she said, because I want to, to sing. I love singing. I feel it's my passion. I feel that it is what you know God called me to do. It is, it, I feel that that is what I can make money from. And I went to my, my pastor and I said to, to my pastor, this is what you know I feel. And she said to her pastor, say, just concentrate on singing in the choir. Now, she might have been disobedient. I don't want to, to say, but she decided that she was going to join a group and she joined the group and they went out and they sang at a club. Now, when her pastor heard about it, her pastor shut her down, come off the choir, come off the praise team, go sit in the congregation. Now, I met this young lady and she is so discouraged. She is she is at a place where she felt like, you know, everything is, is at a loss. She has lost her place in her ministry in church and she has lost her place in, in basically going to sing with this group. Now, what is she supposed to do? My advice to her is simply this. Obey your pastor, but find out how you can pursue your dream, your calling of singing without backsliding. And I made mention of two persons who I feel are case studies in their own right. I mentioned Chevelle Franklin, whom I have met a couple of times in the Jamaica Gospel Music Network functions. And I said, look at Chevelle. Chevelle um, was in the world singing, but look at Chevelle now. Chevelle is singing before 40,000 people um, in South Africa and here in the United Kingdom. She's singing gospel. She's one of the best praise and worship leader that is around at this time. And I said, you know, controversial as it is, look at Marianne All. You know, she is, she gave up the dance hall and is now pursuing her gospel career and saying that she, the Lord has called her to pastorship. And I mentioned some others. I mentioned, you know, prodigal son and I mentioned some others. Look at these people. They are, they have given up the world. Look at Snooky, um, Norfolk. He has given up the world and has pursued the passion in singing gospel and they're making a a living out of it. Why am I saying this to you? Because there is a counter case. The third case that I know of is a young lady that I won't call her name, but she know who she is. You know, while I was attending the church at 111 Winward Road, 101, this girl have a beautiful voice. Evan. And I said to her, join my, my group, join my singing group. And she said, Brother Junior, um, the church don't like me. Now she is touring with people such as Romy and Virgo, Taros, Riley, and all of those things. She's not in church, right? Because she don't feel like the church support her desire to minister and her desire to go after her dream and making money. Now, a lot of persons might find this video controversial and saying that my advice of you know, following your passion at the same time of balance it. But I will hasten to say to those pastors, to those leaders who are advising us, don't let us backslide. Don't let us choose sin because you don't know how to advise us. A lot of us, you know, it's not that we want to backslide. It's not that we love sin. You know, and some of you may say, I have told my daughter, my son, my congregant, 
to never be remarried and they are surviving beautifully in church. But I can say to, to some of you pastors and some of you leaders, they, these members are surviving beautifully in church. But when they go home, when they are not outside of the congregation, they are suffering hell. Some of them are, are watching blue movies. Some of them are masturbating. Some of them are doing certain things to keep a front. And I'm saying to you, don't let us backslide because you don't know how to advise us. But to those individuals who are discouraged and are going through the pain of being put to the back bench, being rejected, saying that you don't and you feel hopeless and alone, like you can't follow your dream. I am saying to you, find a balance. Don't disobey the leadership. You know, there are other churches out there that will support your dream, that will support your you being able to follow your dream, making money if that is a part of the calling that you have. The Bible tells us that the gift of a man make it room for him. And if your gift is singing and it is going to bring you before king, find that balance. If your gift is doing modeling, because I know somebody who, because the church didn't support her in being a model, she backslide, right? And when I saw her the last time, she was naked, all of her breasts out of door, the breasts leg and tie all over the place because the church don't know how to handle people's dream and vision in this time. Let me say this in closing this video. It's a bit long, but I'm saying to you as leaders, we are not living in non-biblical time. We are living in a time where divorce is under rampant. We are living in a time where careers are being made out of showing things and doing things. And yes, it might not look godly, feel godly, or even godly. But you must be able, as our leaders, to say to us, I know this is what you're going through. I know this is what you're facing. I know this is your calling. I know this is how you're going to make your living and your money. And be able to advise us to say, do what you need to do, but don't backslide. I might not be able to tell you exactly what to do, but I am saying to you, don't backslide because your leadership say to you, you can't do this. Find a way to do the balance. Look at the examples that have been made and are making money, making living, doing their acting, but still making an impact in people's lives. All right? I don't remember her name, but... She's an actress. One of the best movies I have seen in a long time is The War Room. She's a noted speaker, a noted um, host um, in terms of a talk show host and interview and all of that thing. She's making her living out of following her acting career and she has not backslide. So there are examples out there that we can follow. And I am saying to you, I have followed good examples. I have gotten remarried and I'm preaching and teaching, singing and to the God, to God's glory. And some may say, you're going to hell, Brother Junior. But I'm saying to you, live for the Lord because at the end of the day, it is the Lord that is going to be your true judge. God bless you. God bless you.